So my sister Julie, of course, she uh, is always here to save the day. She took off with it and is headed to the fields now. So now we can play. The game's at seven thirty, so I, I probably wasn't going to make it. But the uh, thank y'all for having me uh, again up here. Many of you, this may be your third time hearing my testimony or or parts of my testimony, I guess. Uh, Catherine and I, my wife and I, spoke. What was it four years ago? I believe three, three or four years ago. Yeah, uh, remedy. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> On cons uh, during consecration month, and then uh, year before last, uh, Patrick and I gave a joint sermon, if you will. That was really good. That was really good. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. But uh, I don't know why they keep asking me to speak. It's I'm really not that interesting. Uh, and don't have a that much to say, I don't think. But, um, you know, when we first, uh, when Justin first asked to do this, he met with all of us in the uh, library over there one day and he said, you know, one of the things you might think about doing is, is making a uh, kind of a chart of your faith journey or something to that effect. That's what I got of it anyway. <laughs> and, uh, and so I thought about maybe doing a PowerPoint and having you put it up there showing, uh, or, or, or getting the uh, one of those uh, paper flip charts and big red pen and drawing up here uh, my faith journey through the years. And I could do one for my whole lifetime, you know, that would be way up here as a child, an innocent child, and then in my teenage years start to go like this. And then I thought, well, I could do one, you know, uh, for my lifetime. I could do one since I was married. I could do one the last year, the last week, the last day, the last hour, and I realized they'd all look like a seismograph uh, or an earthquake and just be back and forth. And so that, uh, I, I figured well, I wouldn't put y'all through that because they'd all look the same. Well, anyway, most of you know, I, you know, from my previous time speaking, I grew up in Victoria. Uh, grew up Baptist. We moved from Georgia, South Carolina to, uh, to Victoria with my dad working for DuPont. And uh, most of you know that uh, my family you know, made many friends in our church in Victoria, and that's what Catherine and I, my wife and I, have tried to do here at Christ Episcopal. And uh, y'all have all heard about my Sunday school teacher scaring me so bad in Sunday school that I never went back to Sunday school ever again. Uh, <laughs> We attend Christ Church because this is the church Catherine grew up in. So most of y'all have heard that before, and so that was an easy decision for us. But I'm going to try to tell you a little bit more detail, more specifically about, you know, who has served as d disciples in my life, disciples to me. And, of course, uh, you know, that's what the point of these Wednesday nights are, I believe. And so, uh, you know, I've never gotten into much detail on these things because for fear I you know, might start crying like a baby like Tina did last week. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, don't she want that to happen. With a baby. Huh? She was crying with a baby. With a baby, that's yeah. true. She was crying with a baby. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I've had many, many examples through the years being the youngest of five children. Uh, you know, first my mother, of course, who, you know, through the miracle of prayer has kept me safe and you know, alive, literally, you know, for uh, through my teenage years and my, my 20s, my whole life, really. Uh, I can remember her actually praying out loud to God to watch over me. And, uh, you know, it nearly killed her, and she still continues to do that to this day, of course. Uh, my father, I don't have so much of the, the vivid memories of, of him, uh, uh, you know, saying anything in particular. Uh, to me, but I just I always remember him being there and kind of a weird memory. Uh, you know, the, there's always a pew in front of you, and as a little boy, I remember standing there at the pew in church where we're, you know, standing up singing or something, and my father's hand would grab the rail of the pew in front of us, and being a little boy, it was right there in front of me, and I just remember looking at that and just thinking how, you know, strong it looked and you know, sense of security, I guess. And, 
I often wonder if my kids, you know, see the same thing. You know, it's kind of, kind of an odd deal. But also, my father, you know, led by example a little bit, uh, struggled with Parkinson's, uh, passed away when he was 73, but never complained a day about it. You know, and uh, had faith he'd be healed up until the very end. There's Catherine joining us. But, uh, you know, they were, they were definitely disciples in my life and, and led me to, to church and, and, uh, and watched over me. And so, um, I, again, said I was the youngest of five children, so I've got two brothers and two sisters. And my sisters, they also continue to pray for me, for my children, and for my family. Uh, my sister Julie, she would lead by example. Many of y'all know her. Um, you know, she'd send a Bible verse to her children for any special event. It seemed like, you know, Drew for his games, she, she always had a Bible verse in his locker. Or she'd text him one before each game. You know, that was an integral part of their life was uh, their faith. And, and so it was, uh, it was something that resonated with me. Uh, my sister Kelly, she played professional golf. She traveled all over the world, really, for about eight years, coast to coast, to Asia, Europe, you know, playing golf. And I remember her always seeking out a Christian fellowship while she was on tour. You know, little things like that. Just, you know, nothing earth shattering where somebody grabs you and tells you that, but just kind of leading by example uh, the things they did. My two brothers, my brother Bryant, whose uh, son's in uh, confirmation classes right now with my daughter Natalie, his son Luke. Uh, I remember him as when we were children, when I'd get in trouble, he would be more upset than I was. He'd be down the floor pleading with my father to punish him instead of punishing me. <laughs> you know, it hurt him more to see me get spanked than it did me. Uh, just little things like that, selfless acts. Uh, my brother Paul, who's always been uh, just open to everyone he meets, a friend to everyone, would open his home to his friends. Uh, you know, there was always some buddy of his that was on hard times, uh, falling on hard times or just gotten divorced or something like that, that he would take in and would live with him until they got back on their feet. You know, he took me in in college uh, uh, for a year one time. So, I mean, it was, uh, he's, he's always led by example. And so it's, it's uh, pretty ex easy to follow examples of really disciples in my life like that. You know, and now Catherine, you know, she, she prays for me every time, <laughs> every night, you know. It's about to kill her, too. She tells me all the time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's about to kill her. But, uh, you know, it, it, it uh, you know, there, there's just, there's always people, if you look for them, in your life that are just going to give you little nuggets out there of different things that you can, you can look to for strength. Um, and, uh, you know, Andy there. Invited me to, huh? Yeah, invited me to join uh, their their Wednesday morning Bible study uh, that Patrick has over there, and that's been a great. Uh, hold on, where's that? Uh, where, what do we call them? Spiritual. Spiritual gifts. No. No. Last week we were going over what what are your spiritual disciplines? That's, yeah. Yeah. One of mine is one of Wednesday Bible study. Yeah, spiritual disciplines. Last week we were talking about, and so I don't have enough of those, but that's. That's one. That's a start for me. Okay. Um, so switching gears a little bit about, you know, kind of once Catherine and I got here to Christ Church, you know, the kids were, you know, wanted, we wanted them to grow up here in a, in a wonderful church. What I've tried to do is, uh, you know, I've gotten involved in things, and I kind of liken it to, Kind of a bad analogy, probably, but my my academic <coughs> career in college, <laughs> all right, all right, 
once I, uh, at some point during my third freshman year, <laughs> I realized that, uh, you know, I needed to probably have some accountability and responsibility. And the, and the way that I figured out how to do that was to, to move to the front of the class. It sounds real simple, but, you know, to put yourself out there, make yourself known to the teacher, make yourself known to the, uh, you know, the person who's, who's uh, going to be ultimately judging you, I guess. And so I began to get a little more involved with that and sit at the front of the room and felt a connection in with the teacher and felt the responsibility then to, to do the work. And so it's kind of maybe, you know, I don't know if that bad analogy maybe, but kind of what I've tried to do here at Christ Church is, is sit at the front of the room, you know, and make myself available, be responsible for uh, doing some things when asked. And so, um, you know, so far I've, or some of the things, just to kind of tell you all a little bit, you know, I played Santa for a few years at the Sam dinner. That was always good. Once I played Moses, uh, I'm not even sure what that was for. They just asked me to dress up as Moses and go up in front of the church and invite people to something I believe. Uh, I attempted to teach Sunday school. That didn't go well. Uh, have you all ever heard that story? Most of you probably haven't heard the story. I'll tell you real quick. It was in the, uh, we were going through, I think, a transition there with one of the teen uh, ministers, the uh, youth ministers, and uh, Gavin, was it Gavin that asked me, or somebody asked me, hey, would you teach, or Rob asked me, would you teach this week? I'm going to be out of, out of town. I was like, sure, I got it. So I studied. I, man, I really did study the lesson. I highlighted stuff. I had some notes and everything. Well, apparently he was not very confident in my ability because he asked about six other adults <laughs> to be there to assist. Okay? And if y'all remember those lean times back there with our teenagers, uh, six adults was twice as many kids as we had. In the right. So they had, they had the stool up front where you taught from, and then they had two arcing rows of chairs. And the kids, of course, like me, they sat on the back row. And then the parents, when I got ready, I said, okay, let's go ahead and do the lesson. They came and all sat on the front row, right in front of the children. I mean, I had Mary Ellen Archer and Heather Young. And, uh, you know, I was just saying, what am I going to tell you? I can't even see the kids. You know? And so, and so it was, I mean, I was sweating. I got through about a minute and a half, maybe, maybe, maybe two. And finally, I just said, y'all got anything? I'm, I'm done. <laughs> and so, I mean, I was, it, 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 if they'd have left, it was just been me and the kids, I'd have probably been all right. But it, uh, that's not the way it worked. Anyway, sorry, a little side note there. Uh, let's see, get back to things, things that kind of uh, we've enjoyed uh, being able to do here at Christ Church. We took that, uh, Thanksgiving dinner out to the, uh, some teens at a home in Bulverde a few times. Um, that was it was very satisfying. Uh, served as a greeter. Uh, uh, volunteered in the outreach quad occasionally. Patrick, I'm trying to get that name going over there. <laughs> outreach quad. And uh, let's, let's see. I mentioned I, Catherine and I were, were chairman of the stewardship campaign. Uh, we spoke during a, 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 another one as well. Uh, and I currently am in my third year on the, on the vestry, which has been very uh, satisfying and, and fulfilling. Um, but I'm the last person probably that, that uh, thought I'd be up here or, or be doing any of those things in a church. And there's, there's probably many out there that would agree uh, <laughs> with me and, and say I shouldn't be. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm... Again, it's the size seismometer uh, deal, but uh, but I believe in what you know. Patrick says on most Sundays that God brought you to Christ Church for a reason. That's what He tells to visitors: is that we're it, it, we've been brought here for a reason. And I take it to heart when we you know at the end of each Sunday 
say, now go out and do the work God has given you to do, to love and serve the Lord as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, or, or something like that. It's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I believe in that. And so that's what we try to do. You know, and, and there's so many good examples within Christ Church. Um, you know, I look, of course, to our clergy. I mentioned to Justin last week that, uh, you know, we're talking about who was our, uh, let me flip back what they call that. Well, today you're talking about who, who are your mentors. That's one of the first questions today in our study. Um, you know, where do you find support in your faith journey was last week, kind of a similar question. You know, and I mentioned to him that, you know, I'd, I'd never been friends with clergy before. All right. I consider all these guys my friends now. John Barrett was probably the first years ago. You know, we bonded a little bit over baseball. His son Johnny played on my baseball team with uh, my son Matthew. And so that was, uh, you know, that's, that's part of what helps us to become involved and, and uh, you know, helps us as in, our, in our journey. Um, you know, besides the clergy, there's, there's all sorts of people within our church. You know, look, Bobby West is sitting right there. I mean, Presbyterian minister, he loves his church as much as anybody. You know, um, Robert Rogers. I mean, that, what, a, what a wonderful man he is. Um, was Rudy Gonzalez, is that his last name, uh, that sits out here every Sunday and, and comes to church every week? I mean, talk to that guy for a minute and you'll believe. Um, you know, there's just so many faithful people in our church it's easy if you're open to it and you look for it to find uh, to find mentors to find help, and so that's what uh, I actually had somebody call me a couple of weeks ago and try to to ask me if I if I had a way they could uh, could uh, I, I could help them along and find things for them to to become closer to God. I never thought that would happen in my life. That's, that's, that's unbelievable to me. So, um, anyway, thank y'all for having me. I, I hope I've said what I'm supposed to say. Um, you know, I love Christ Church and I'm glad to be here. And thank you for all of you. Patrick. Man, I just know. Oh, yeah? He's coaching kids. And I thought, man, this is a stand-up guy. So said, you know, he's a, one of our little kids said, hey, I'm, I'm playing my first baseball game. You should go see me play. And, yeah. And then I remember said, that. You know, that's Matt Marquette. He's part of the parish. And he's a coach. I said, wow. And, um, but I saw you in action. You know, I, we really need men role models like you. Um, if you've ever seen Matt work in the outreach quad at Sidewalk Saturdays, it's quite a treat. Because Justin usually puts him over the clothes. <laughs> and you think that'd be kind of easy, like, you know, that people come and they'll just pick out one little garment and leave. No, 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 no. <laughs> the problem we have at the Sidewalk Saturday is that we have some folks that are funding and filling their whole yard sales. And so, um, you know, you'll see, these, you'll see these ladies come in and kind of go, Eureka! And I was Plenty watching that a few weeks ago, and he said, ma'am, I count one, two, three, four. Move along. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be firm with those folks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, uh, you but y'all all know. Always, a lot of you are there. You're always able to lead with that, with that real masculinity and that firmness, but you don't beat people up. And I think that's a mark of a Christian man that can lead that well. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it again and again in the way you do things. And it, uh, it's a real gift to us. Well, thank you for that, Patrick. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. So we've been on this journey, as Matt said. Um, we started with come and see, and then last week was follow me, and tonight is be with me. And we're moving from this idea of, of discovering Jesus to growing in Jesus and now having a covenant with Jesus. And we learn how to have that covenant through the mentors and examples like Matt just shared with us this evening of the people who have, have transformed his life um, by being in relationship with, with folks like that. 
um, then we are given a glimpse of a, uh, what a relationship with Christ could be and what that covenant looks like. And so tonight we have um, longer scripture passages, so I'm not going to read them. So um, if, if you would read the first passage um, from John, and then, um, and then we'll go over to Robert, yeah, to read the second passage. Yes, yeah. From John 14. I think it's powerful to hear that um, the disciples are asking, show us, show us, and Jesus is willing to show them, right, and to, to mentor the disciples so that they can have a relationship with the Almighty God. And, uh, and so this whole idea of being with Jesus, Jesus is totally open to us being with him um, and will show us then how to have a covenant relationship with, with God. Um, because Jesus is the covenant, right? Um, Jesus is that relationship. And so, um, a powerful passage. Thank you for reading it. Luke chapter 6. Yeah. Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 49. But I say to you, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you have you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to, lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be the children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and you will be forgiven. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you will give will be the measure you give back. He also told them a parable: Can a blind man, can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like the teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eyes, but do not notice the log in your own eye? 
how can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take out the speck in your eye when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each true tree is known for its own, by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good. And the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone is like in front of you. Here's my words and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on a rock. When the flood rose, the river burst against the house but could not shake it, because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like the man who built his house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, immediately fell, and great was the ruin of the house. Thank you. So once again, we hear that Jesus wants to be in relationship with us, um, and that uh, he is there to, to guide us and to lead us and to show us the um, how to have a right relationship with God. Um, and it's, it's to be with Jesus, it's all about a relationship, isn't it? It's, um, it's not a transaction, it's transformation. Um, our lives are transformed by Christ and through those who show us Christ, and then we then have the opportunity to show Christ to others, and they're ultimately transformed as well. We, we say quite a bit at the, in the outreach quad um, on Sidewalk Saturdays that um, there's a big difference between charity and outreach. Charity is a transaction. You know, we might write a check, you know, that kind of thing. It's typically anonymous. You don't get to meet the people who receive um, your gifts, um, and that's important. There's, there's a place for charity. But within the church, we do outreach, and outreach is about building relationships and, and offering the transformation of God in Christ Jesus to those that we're in covenant with. And so when we talk about the people that we serve on Saturday mornings, um, just like we talk about James Madison School, we talk about our people our kids, our teachers, because they're a part of this church, they're a part of our community, they're a part of who we are. And it's a big difference to think about that transactional um, uh, way of being versus a transformational way of being. Jesus is inviting us in these passages to be in that transformation. Um, and it does take mentors to do that. A mentor is somebody who says, well, I'm gonna do this and, and, and you watch. And then the next time, I'm going to do it again, and you help. And then the third time, they say, why don't you do it, and I'll help. And then the fourth time is, you do it, and I'll watch. Right? And so that's kind of the pattern that we go through. Uh, Melinda and I were making some sign cases this, this week, yesterday, actually. And uh, Nita Shaver was our mentor. And, and that's what she did. She said... I'm going to do this and you watch. And then she helped us a little bit. And then she went on to another task and we ended up filling the things with, with uh, concrete and making these concrete sign holders. And um, it was an awesome deal, but it was mentorship. And I don't even think we even said, hey, we're being mentored by Nita. It just happened, right? Most of the mentors that you have in your life don't declare it. Um, it's something that, that you experience looking back. Um, when my grandmother died of cancer, she was uh, 96 years old. Um, we didn't know it, that she had died of cancer. She didn't tell anybody um, until we got the death certificate and it said cancer on it. And we're, I turned to my grandfather and I said, what's up with that? And, and she, you know, he said she didn't want anyone to tell her how to, you know, to go get treatment and that kind of stuff. She was ready, you know. Um, and my grandfather and grandmother, before she passed away, I was um, a church planter, so I was starting a church, an Episcopal church in Houston, and my grandmother wanted me to preach her service, um, which was a huge honor. Um, 
And my grandfather invited me to preach his, too, before he passed away, and so I did both of their funerals. Um, we were standing in the church that they were a part of for over 60 years um, in Rockford, Illinois. And my grandfather took me by the arm, and he prayed for me because he could tell I was extremely nervous. Um, and, and I'm always nervous when I'm up in front of people. Most people can't recognize it, but I am. Um, but he could recognize it because he was my grandpa, you know. And uh, he prayed for me, and then afterwards he, he said, look around this building. It was, um, it was the old church building that was converted into a parish hall, and then they had built a new uh, church building. You, you, you know how that kind of happens over the years. And um, he said, look around, and so I did. And every single banner that was hanging there, my grandmother had made. Every single one. And there was one for every liturgical season um, and, um, and kind of traced the lectionary. Um, and I was just amazed. And, and he said, the crazy thing, Justin, is that we built this building. We were the first members. They were the first members of the church. They were church planters. And I never knew that. But they had mentored me throughout my life and taught me throughout my ministry and had given me um, you know, those nuggets, right? Just those, those little things of, of how to reach people and how to share the love of Christ with people in order to build a church. And, and I was employing those in my ministry without even knowing that they had actually come from my grandparents. And, and when you stop to think about it and recognize that that's where it came from, it's, it's, um, it's just amazing to think about how they, they did teach and helped you along the way. They would do it and you would watch. They would, you would do it and you would help. They would help you do it and then they'd watch you do it and then they set you free. Um, and um, it's an amazing, uh, amazing deal. And so just like Matt has had so many uh, mentors and relationships in his life, so have I and so have you. And so this evening, we, um, we're gonna talk about those at our tables. Who are the mentors? that have changed your life. Um, and maybe this will be the moment to actually look back at your life and go, I never realized it, but so-and-so really had a great impact on me. Um, I never realized it, but these people really were um, transformational. Um, and it's about those relationships and the transformation. It's, it's those folks who offered to be in a covenant relationship with you, who said, I'm willing to walk with you through the good times, and the bad times. I'm willing to be with you when you screw up and make mistakes, um, and also when you do things right. I'm willing to just be there, and that's what Jesus says to us, be with me, because Jesus will never walk away from us. And, uh, and so as disciples, we're called to be with Christ. And so who are those mentors? The baptismal covenant outlines our commitments um, to our spiritual life. What are those commitments and, and how do we exercise those and put those into, um, into our life and how have people helped us figure out what those are, our disciplines, our ministries, why we do what we do. What does it mean to be a serving leader? You know, so mentors watch you and help you and then they let you go and, and do what you need to do. What, what is it? What, what are you doing? How are you serving and leading? Um, and what does that mean? Um, and how does that affect your faith journey? And what does it mean um, to have a strong servant's heart? So those are just some um, light questions for the evening to ponder. And so as we uh, do that at our table groups, be mindful of, of um, those folks who have changed your life and, um, and share with one another. And then we'll gather back together to, um, to have some group discussion before we end for the evening.